Hi, good afternoon, how are you doing? It's Jim. Welcome back to Adventures in Music, where we listen to, talk about, and do all sorts of things musically. As you can see, I've not got my headphones on, which means, oh no, we're going to be talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing a list because I love lists, and I know a lot of you like lists as well. Um, so I thought, I haven't done one for a few weeks. I, I'd be good to do one. And I was thinking, what haven't I done? I've talked about sort of my favourite albums, favourite bands. Uh, all sorts of i have not I've ever something i've never done it's actually talked about my favorite songs and they don't actually necessarily represent my favorite bands or even my favorite albums so it's going to be quite an interesting list this because when i was pulling this together i realized there's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't feature on my top 10 bands of all time list so this could be fun um so when i say these are my favorite songs they're not necessarily favorite but they are songs that i couldn't imagine not having in my life uh, for one reason or another and i'm going to start off with one which is probably might surprise you a little bit now i haven't got this on vinyl i've only got it the cd this is rem uh, the album's automatic for the people but the song that is probably the one of the most important songs to me in my entire life is everybody hurts i know it's a bit of a cliche but it I had it playing on loop um, 19 years ago when my, when my dad died. And it was just, I, it was the only thing I could relate to at the time. And it was so important to me. Um, that it was a, a fairly mainstream pop rock group that made the song, had made no odds to me at all. A song is a song. A great song is a great song. And this one totally is it. I know it's hugely important still to a lot of people now, 32 years later. Um, but that, for me, is absolutely uh, one of the... Whenever I hear that song, um, it transports me back to that moment in my life. <laughs> one of the most dark, horrible, awful moments of my life. But an incredibly powerful moment. And this was the soundtrack of it. and. I cannot divorce myself from that sound, from that song, and I wouldn't want to. Even though it's painful, it's very, very important. So that is uh, my first pick. Now, these aren't in any order. They're just <laughs> as they come out. And they are as they are today. Uh, given another day, actually, this list might be a little bit different. Now, the second song comes from this album. This is Rush with... Uh, permanent waves and the song that i'm picking from here is the spirit of radio so it's probably i suppose one of the rush's more famous songs that uh, people may have heard who are not necessarily uh fans of or know rush at all and i suspect that's probably why it's one of my favorite songs i heard it on the radio it's the first thing i think i remember ever hearing of rushes um from nearly 40 years ago and um it would have been on Tommy Vance's uh, the Friday Night Rock Show uh, and also on the local radio station on the rock show on there. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. And that introduced me to Rush. And I, I rushed out and bought like a Rush best of CD or whatever it was at the time. Um, probably a tape, actually, to be honest. Uh, I, it's only more recently that I've started collecting and listening to Rush albums. But Spirit of Radio, oh, what an introduction to the band. And it kind of does, in a short period, I don't know how long the song is, six minutes maybe, but it encapsulates everything that's great about Rush in that one song. Oh, I just love it. Absolutely love it. My next choice comes from this album. This is Yes, of course it is. Um, going for the one. And the song... <laughs> probably not going to be a surprise to some of you, is Awaken. Uh, I heard this a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago for the first time. Um, and aside from it being the most sensational, spiritual, impactful piece of music I think I'd heard in a long time, the moment of the the crescendo, the climax of the whole song. I looked out of the window over there 
And there was a red kite, which is a, a bird of prey here in the UK. It's circling around and around and around. And it just could not be more perfect. I was, I was sort of moved to tears as it happened. It was just, oh, my God. Um, it absolutely was just astonishing. And it has stayed with me ever since. I, I'm always looking for more awakened moments. And uh, I haven't had many of them since then or up to that point either but that was something that was so special so so spectacular that it will stay with me for the rest of my life next choice we're whistling through these aren't we um this is a an artist that i've discovered as a result of my youtube channel and it's devin townsend and the album that i'm uh, highlighting here is empath the song that is from here it's a bit of a cheat because it's a biggie. It's Singularity. It's a 22-minute epic. It takes up all of side four of this. It, in the space of 22 minutes, covers so much ground, uh, so many different styles and feels and genres. Every moment of Devin's career uh, that you can think of, the, the quirky, the heavy, the, the rocking, the ambient, the indie in places, the, the the electronica side of it, the insanely extreme metal parts, the progginess, everything is in this one track, and it is just sensational, absolutely amazing. If I could only take one Devin Townsend track with me for the rest of the life, that would be it. Right, we're going to get to a fun one now. This is Motorhead. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? Um, I adore Motorhead uh, for the reason that I absolutely adore very, very early Iron Maiden. It's that sort of punky crossover between sort of rock and punk and attitude. The track I actually uh, would always pick over every other, and I've played more times than I can possibly count in my uh, ever, is Overkill. Uh, it's absolutely flipping bloody brilliant the track it has uh it is as rough as you like rough around the edges of course it is it's is it's, it's lemmy it's motorhead but um filthy phil taylor double bass drum pot on here is brilliant and it stops and it goes again you think oh he has a false ending and you think oh brilliant it has another false ending. It sort of keeps you going. It has all these false endings. You think the song's finished and it gets going again. And it just keeps giving and giving and giving and giving. And it is so full of energy, so full of excitement, so brilliant for a, a 13 or 14 year old kid as I was when I heard this for the first time. It was absolutely blew me away. And I knew from that moment, as well as other stuff that I was listening to, sort of Maiden and Priest and uh, ACDC, that rock, hard rock and metal were going to be an important element of my life. Uh, Lemmy was this sort of, I don't know, gargantuan god of the, of the, of the, of the scene. And I just, uh, I, he's very dangerous. My parents certainly wouldn't have approved. Um, and Overkill is the track which I come back to time and time again. Of course, you could have said uh, Bomber or Ace of Space, you know, the other two sort of big ones, or uh, any number of other tracks from Motorhead as well. But the one that I always, always, always come back to, and I listen to just randomly on a, in a playlist somewhere, is Overkill. <laughs> I love it. Right, so now we're going to visit a band called tool i don't know if you've heard of them a little band from america they've uh, had some success over the years <laughs> lateralus uh it's the grudge it's the grudge it's the first thing i heard from them on my channel the first time i re revisited this band after a long time i'd heard schism i think in the in a past life and kind of hadn't really connected with it uh i probably hadn't given it much attention i hadn't wasn't listening to it i just I heard it rather than listened to it. Uh, the grudge from here is when Tool all started to make sense to me. And it was uh, a transformative moment. It remains, I think, probably my second or third highest viewed video on the channel. Uh, and 
it was it was it was a long time ago it was six years ago i i I look very different from how i do now the the surroundings are different the quality of the recording and everything about that is all different but that moment uh was an awakening for me uh opened my tool eye if there's such a thing i know there's a third eye but you know what i mean uh but yeah that that was super super important um where are we going to go next? So I, I want to save. Uh, I'm going to get rid of. Okay, I'm going to go through some of these new ones for me now. So this is a Marillion. Of course it is. And this is their last album, not as in their final album, the, the, the most recent album from a couple of years ago, an hour before it's dark. And there's a song on here called Care. It comes towards the end of the album. And oh my god, it's a gut punch of a of a song. It really is. It's it tells the story that so many of us faced and lived with during the pandemic, during lockdown, during the those dark months where we were losing family members, people were dying. The NHS here in the UK was absolutely on its knees. Uh, trying to cope with the with the just constant constant influx of of people and it tells the story about those trying to look after all of us from a from a, a medical point of view and it was just it's it's wonderful and it it, it reduced me to t- I was an absolute sobbing wreck when I listen to this and I'm I'm not embarrassed to say so it was on, on camera and it just caught me completely off guard and uh, it was it was it was a moment that song is one of the most important songs I've ever heard in my life and it's uh, it's on that record all right next up I'm going to go with Haken this album is The Mountain and the song from this I mean it could be any of these songs this is my favorite out one of my favorite albums ever um i'm gonna go with falling back to earth it's super heavy it's super quirky it's super haken <laughs> i could have gone with the cockroach king but it's maybe a little bit too obvious and uh it, i guess that's their the greatest hit as you were as it as it were but uh no falling back to earth is is has similar elements of the cockroach king it's very haken is really quirky as i say it has jazzy moments it has um sort of brazilian type moments it's got really heavy heavy rock moments it's got uh, it's got metal moments i mean it's so proggy it's an absolutely powerhouse of a of a piece of music um and it is one of these bands that I've discovered in the last six and a half years. Without the channel, I would not have known of Haken. I would not have heard this music, and I certainly wouldn't have heard this record. And this record is one that I've listened to more times, I think, than, than a lot of the other ones. That I've that are, Certainly of Haken's, but of the bands that I've heard since having the channel. I think The Mountain, this record, is probably the most played album that I have. Probably closely followed by Devin Townsend, something of his. But uh, I think that I think this one is the one. We're getting there. We've got three songs left with three albums of three artists. Now I'm going to go with this one as my next choice. This is uh, Stephen Wilson. Hand Cannot Erase is the album. And the song that I'm going to pick is split, it's actually split it out into two parts here, but it's, it's not, it's one piece. It's, a, it's Home Invasion slash Regret 9. And they are not independent pieces. They are, it, one just segues into the other without any pause. It is a, is a continuation of the same song. I can't separate them out. When it's played live, it's always two together. And I spoke to Adam Holzman, who was the guy who played keyboards and synths on this. He said it is one song. It's treated as one song. It's recorded in that way. It's played in that way. Um, when they play it live, it's always the two together as one piece. 
and therefore for me it is one piece it has so many elements of what makes Stephen Wilson exciting and interesting as an artist it's got some fantastic uh, guitar bass drum parts and very very uh, cool electric piano and keyboard parts high energy full on uh, speed changes tempo changes key changes feel changes and then having gone through the sort of main body of the song it then kind of just moves into this instrumental section at the end which is comprised of two phenomenal solos one of which is by adam holzman on the moog synthesizer and it is probably one of the greatest synth solos ever committed to record uh, and i include in that uh, people like keith emerson and rick, rick, rick waitman um and it is then followed by, again, one of the greatest guitar solos ever committed to record by Guthrie Govan. And in saying that, I'd include uh, uh, Pink Floyd and I'd include Yes and um, every other amazing artist you can think of. It is that good. And if you've not heard it, you really, really need to. The song is Home Invasion slash Regret 9. And it's from this album, Hand Cannot Erase. I have two songs left. Now I am going to pick the one that might surprise you is this one. This is Iron Maiden. Of course it is. They're not going to not be in my list, are they? This the album is The Number of the Beast. And the song that I'm going to pick is a bit of a deep cut. It's uh, The Prisoner. And the reason I'm going to pick this is it's just a full-on fun, hard-rocking, feel-good song. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not feel-good as in, oh, ha, 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 let's have fun, that sort of thing. It's not, it just, it just makes you want to move and to, and, and to just move. It's just absolutely brilliant. It's the, uh, a song version of that old 1960s uh, TV series, The Prisoner, uh, with Patrick McGowan. And, it's absolutely brilliant. It's uh, got the great guitar solos. It's got Steve Harris's galloping bass. It's got the introduction of Bruce into the band with his amazing uh, vocals. Still got Clive Burr on here with his very tasteful drumming. And the whole thing is short, succinct, concise, and just brilliant and it's as good a song as any uh, there are so many singles that iron maiden released in those early years that are go to fantastic tracks as well your yeah, aces of spade yeah. aces high the trooper running run running free run to the hills uh the number of the beast itself two minutes to midnight wasted years um yeah, oh can i play with madness you know all these tracks there's so many amazing tracks but they still had brilliant, brilliant tracks on the albums, which is why I want to highlight that one. Because for me, it's not necessarily the best track they've ever done, of course, but it's the one which instantly is, yes, it's Iron Maiden. It's Number of the Beast. It makes me happy. And it's always got to be there. And that's why that's on there. Now, we're at the final track. And this isn't necessarily my number one track. It's just the last one we come to on this on this list today but well, it's going to be some floyd it's pink floyd uh wish you were here is the album and the track that we're going to be listening to not listening to oh no i made a mistake there the track we're going to be talking about is shine on your crazy diamond with its very many parts um not the first thing i heard of pink floyd's but it was very early on and i think when I heard this, it was a moment of realisation that this is something very, very special. The way the music was treated with reverence, the slow reveal of the, of the song, I think it's, it like goes on for a huge amount, like five or six minutes before we even have a, any singing at all. It's 
just such a beautifully slowly unwrapped piece of music and it doesn't stop there it gets big we then have saxophones we have guitar breaks we have the story of sid we have the the lament of the band of sid's absence from the band and it's and it's heartbreaking and it's beautiful and it is absolutely so pink floyd it's just one of the greatest songs ever made and uh i couldn't imagine life without that song i certainly couldn't imagine life without that album but that song itself so there we go that's my top 10 certainly today uh songs that are significant hugely important to me and why they mean so much to me uh make a list of the of your own in the comments below let me know what yours are if you agree with these if you hate them um yeah let me know and uh maybe we'll have the conversation continued in the future i'll see you on the next video whenever and whatever that is until then this is jim over and out <laughs>